Okay, Jacob, if you put the first, or Kayla, if you put the first slide up there. Let's pray. Father, in the time that we spend in the next few minutes discussing a question that is of critical importance to all of us, Father, and as we continue to examine the truths which are central to our journey as followers of Christ, as Christians, we ask, Father, that you would bless my word, guard and check everything I say before it proceeds from my mouth, that it might be first approved by you. And Lord, once spoken, but our prayer is that what is said here today is truth spoken into our lives. That you would convict and teach and grow each of us. In Jesus' name, amen. Basic training, essential truths to the Christian faith. As we take up that topic today again and continue on in our series together, I want to start by introducing today's subject with a little quiz, which should be very easy for all of you. Okay? It's a what's it for quiz. So the question is, what's it for? Okay, next. What's it for? Troutner, you've been back here looking at that? Nice. For tightening or loosening fasteners. Okay, next. Fishing. It's a rod and reel. It's harder to see. That's a little, that one was extra credit. Okay, next. Sweeping. I know for some of you men, you're like, I don't have any idea what that's for. <laughs> it's something that some people ride. <laughs> okay, next. Right, good. Next. Riding. That's straightforward enough. Unless you're James Bond, then who knows? Okay, next. What's that for? Right. Jerry, keep it clean. Next. What's that for? Next. What's that for? Next. What's that for? Next. What are they for? Next. What's he for? Next. Imagine your face on that screen. Recognizing that everything that is, everything that's been made, everything that ever will be made has a purpose. My question to you this morning is, what are you for? What's your purpose? What's the reason that you're alive? What are you living for? What were you created to do or to be? Do you have an answer to that question? Do we each have an answer to that pressing question? What am I for? I guess it would be fair to ask, well, does it really matter? And I would suggest to you, in the strongest of terms, that if this life is it, and when this life is over, I am destined for the worms, then it doesn't matter what I'm for. If when my heart stops beating and my lungs stop breathing and my brain stops functioning, I know something has been suggested may have already occurred. But when those things all happen and I physically die and my body goes into the grave, if everything that is me goes into that grave when I'm covered over and I become food for worms, then I would suggest to you it doesn't matter what my purpose for living was. And to tell you the honest truth, I could care less. Because if that's all there is, and I go to a grave, and I simply cease to exist, I don't give a rip why I was created to be. If it's just done. That was interesting. This was Solomon's conclusion. 
this famous king of Israel, son of David, the wisest of men, as he pondered in the book of Ecclesiastes the meaning of life, as he examines, well, you know what? If this is all there is to it, I mean, if we just live and then die and we're done, there's no part of us that keeps on going, then it doesn't matter. I suppose he would say the best you can do is to eat, drink, and be merry. And I think he'd add on to there, eat, drink, be merry, and get stuff. You know, if you're, you're going to live for 40 years, 60 years, 100 years, whatever, you might as well eat, drink, marry, and get as much stuff as you can to enjoy while the journey lasts because then it's just over. And so frankly, it doesn't really matter what you do or whether you discover your purpose for life because when it's over, it's over. Hmm. Here is to me a foolish notion. Here is to me the idea of a wasted life. To examine all the evidence of the world around us. To ponder the utter impossibility of life happening by accident. And to listen to even for just a moment to that quiet urging from deep within our souls that says God is real. There's more to life than meets the eye. There's more to life than just this life. To examine and to consider those things and then against all of that to somehow conclude that there is no God and that there is no life after death. To me is sad and foolish. Among my deer hunting buddies, I am somewhat famous for being a lousy morning deer hunter. I'm, I'm first rate in the afternoons. But mornings are tough. And even while I'll stay up late, you, and David Harmon will be the best person. You guys remember um, Alice in Wonderland? Inside joke. David Harm would be the best to affirm this because David spends night after night after night up here hunting with me and we'll go to bed excited. I mean, me too. Excited to get up at 5 in the morning to go out deer hunting. And every time though, 5 in the morning rolls around and there's David in my bedroom standing over my bed shaking me going, come on, let's go! And I'm always like, oh. No, you go ahead. Come on, Doug, come on! And I say, no, David, seriously, there's nothing moving out there today anyway. Sometimes he'll get me out of bed and sometimes I'll go, but sometimes I don't. Never knowing whether on those mornings I skip because there's nothing moving out there anyway, that may have been the day the big buck would walk by my tree. And as sad and frankly, ultimately trivial as that is, I'm also struck with the reality that this is, to some people, life. The idea that there is a possibility that there is life after death, the idea that there is a possibility, do we need to do something or are we good now? Okay, I don't know what... Is that, am I doing something? 